Hello, everyone. It's my great pleasure to welcome you to the University of Manchester to this very important occasion and the splendid surroundings of our Whitworth Hall for this graduation ceremony. In particular, a warm welcome to our graduates, whose magnificent achievements and very hard work we're here to celebrate today. You as a group of students have had an even harder time than many who went before you. You've suffered through the pandemic. But the fact that you've come through it and you've still managed to achieve your degrees is a testament to your resilience, your hard work and your talents. And you should be very proud of that. I'm delighted also to see so many friends and family here. And I want to thank you for the support and encouragement you've given to our graduates during their studies. This has been so important to their success. Just like their tutors and members of staff in their schools, you can be extremely proud of what they have achieved. So you made a good choice in coming to the University of Manchester. We are, by many measures, a leading global university in research, in teaching, and in social responsibility. We are amongst the top universities by most league tables and in the top 1% in many of them. We're also the most popular university in the United Kingdom for student applications. So your degree will be valued by many. Hopefully during the co course of your studies here, you've gained skills and knowledge that will faci fa facilitate your future career. But I hope you've learned much more than that. I hope you've formed views, developed new ideas, gone beyond your subjects. I hope you've made lifelong friends, and in some cases, perhaps even lifelong partners. It's often said at graduation ceremonies in some parts of the world that the university is not just a place of learning, it's also a dating agency. <laughs> so with 160 nationalities represented here on campus, the University of Manchester is already a truly global institution and one which will remain so. We greatly value our international staff, students and alumni from all over the world. And if any of you have joined us here from outside the United Kingdom, you're extremely welcome. During your time here, you've contributed to the university and helped to shape it to the tremendous benefit of those who will follow in your footsteps. By reflecting on your experiences and telling us how we could make them even better, you have and will help us to improve. We always welcome your feedback. In just under two years, the university will be celebrating its 200th anniversary. But it's changing, and it will continue to change and adapt for the better, in part because of you. So today is just as much about us honoring you for your valuable contributions as it is for your success in your academic studies. You have every reason to be positive about your future. Your job prospects, having studied here, are enviable. And we remain the most targeted university in the country by the top 100 employers. Whether you go on to future careers of work immediately or on to further study, we wish you well in those ventures. Obtaining your degree and graduating today are hugely important milestones, and you should celebrate your success but we hope that this is the beginning of the journey of your association with Manchester, not the end. As graduates, you will forever be part of the University of Manchester family. The return on your investment continues way beyond today's celebration. Our career service continues to offer you help and support for three years, and you can continue to make good use of our world-class libraries. Our Alumni Association will help you to maintain contact with the university, linking you with a community of over 550,000 living Manchester graduates across the globe. As alumni, you may wish to help future students, and you can do so in many ways, as ambassadors of the university, in student placements and employment, directly or in the development of the university, which is vital to its future. So we sincerely hope that today will not be your last contact with the university. Please remember, our doors will always be open to you. Thank you. Good afternoon, graduates and guests. 
I'm Professor Kay Marshall, and I have the privilege and pleasure of being the head of the School of Health Sciences, to which the students graduating today belong. Words can't really express how pleased we all are to be here in the fabulous Whitworth Hall in person. The graduation ceremony is the high spot of the, our academic year, and from a personal perspective, entering the hall as the organ strikes up never fails to move me, particularly so this year, as it signifies an important return to academic normality for those of us who are fortunate enough to work and study at this great university. So it's really wonderful to be gathered together to celebrate the fantastic achievements of those waiting to walk across the stage today. To decide to undertake and complete a programme of study at an institution where academic rigour is required tests the very best of us in normal times. To undertake this, as our graduates have done in a global pandemic, is an outstanding achievement, requiring tenacity and enthusiasm for excellence. And I am sure that the resilience you will have acquired along the way will stand you in good stead in your future career. The School of Health Sciences is one of the three schools that make up the Faculty of Biology, Medicine and Health. The School of Health Sciences is a broad church. Our students engage in a wide range of programmes and research, going from wet lab science to epidemiological studies and clinical research, from data science and informatics to direct patient and carer working and research. The School of Health Sciences, our school, and is terrific. And this is not just because of the quality, breadth and depth of our teaching and research and our fantastic work in pursuing the university's third goal of social responsibility. To paraphrase a popular song, we are simply the best school because of our people, namely those sitting behind and across from me on the stage, our staff, and of course those sitting in front of me, our soon-to-be graduates. In health sciences, we welcome undergraduate and postgraduate students from over 100 countries, which is hugely beneficial to us, as these students bring not only knowledge, but just as importantly, their culture with them. And in turn, this enriches ours. And I hope that all of our overseas students take a little bit of the powerhouse that is Manchester back home with them. However, before going any further, it is right that our graduates thank the very important group of people that Nancy has just mentioned, who are with us today. Without this group of people, your learning journeys may not have happened or been quite so smooth. So if our graduates would like to stand up, give their families a wave and a round of applause as a thank you. So a very warm thank you from us too, to all of our VIPs. The vision of the School of, the Health, Sci School of Health Sciences is simple, namely to improve health through our research and teaching. And these two activities inform each other. These activities are also two-way. And I noted from a comment in the recent National Student Survey, a student picked up on this saying that Lecturers are incredibly passionate and dedicated to teaching their students as well as learning from them in turn. We do indeed listen and learn from our students. And many colleagues are now working through questionnaire and survey data so that we can take learning and make improvements for next year. Health Sciences continues to produce high quality, impactful research. And this research will change the lives of people with all manner of illnesses and problems. So whether it's personalizing a therapy for an individual or leading major public health initiatives to improve population health, we're in there doing it. 
During the pandemic, we successfully shifted established programmes onto COVID work, as well as starting new projects, such as in investigating the impact of COVID on contact lens use and on hearing, plus the challenges of face mask use for people with hearing impairment and communication difficulties. Researchers in health sciences have had a great year across the board, successfully competing for funding, particularly in the pursuit of large multi-million pound awards. And thanks to the hard work of so many, our performance in the National Research Excellence Framework, or REF exercise, which is the equivalent of finals for us, but it runs not across several weeks, but several years, we did once again demonstrate our world-leading excellence as we continue to address key health and care challenges as well as supporting the health and social care workforce to translate this into practice. We're also committed to playing our part in tackling inequalities. And I would include health inequalities as one of the key challenges of our time. In addition to the sterling work of our brilliant health economists in this area, we know that inequality can take many forms. For example, the lack of parity of esteem between mental and physical health, or be attributable to disability. I note the description of hearing loss and as invisible disability in the WHO report on hearing, published in March of 2021, which also stated that over 1.5 billion people currently have some hearing loss, and this already huge number is predicted predicted to increase to 2.5 billion over the next 30 years. Our team in the International Centre for Language and Communication Development, known to us as the Lucid Centre, have also demonstrated that getting a good start in early life is vital, as children who enter school with good language skills have better chances in school, better chances of entering higher education, and better economic success in adulthood. You may be asking why this is important to you. And I think these quotes, again from our student surveys, sum it up better than I can. Really good university, interesting, intellectually challenging work, lots of nice people here, and the modules are taught by people who are experts in their fields, and therefore the teaching is very enthusiastic and cutting edge. So colleagues, you are appreciated, and not just by me, but more importantly, by our students. Our research drives our teaching forward and ensures that our graduates are not only fit for employment now, but also in the future. In my job, I meet with employers of our students and I've been told that Manchester graduates stand out as they're better able to hit the ground running and are well prepared for work. Our commitment to placement-based learning supports this preparation and staff work very hard to ensure that you get access to high quality work placements, which I know from listening to you and reading your comments that gives, gives you confidence as you start work. Confidence as a new registrant of a profession is so important, particularly as it is perhaps an understatement to say that the health and social care workplace has never been more challenging, and in such uncertain times, we could not be more proud of you. Teaching, particularly at the postgraduate level, requires honesty and trust particularly again to important things like feedback, which does, as I said, go both ways. Rest assured, we do appreciate your feedback and we use it to keep going from strength to strength as we enhance the learning experience of those that will follow you. We're also very aware that many of our students, particularly those studying on postgraduate programs, are holding down a job too, and many also have caring responsibilities. And we recognise that this makes your achievements even more amazing. And for those of you who've completed a research component in your higher degree, we thank you for your contribution to our ongoing research. You have helped put a piece in the puzzle. I'm also particularly proud of all the other non-academic achievements of students and staff. 
Lots of you are very committed to social responsibility, or SR. Many of these truly heartwarming SR projects have been recognised by the university in the Making a Difference Awards. Our teams do walk the walk, as they say, and use their skills to support our wider community, particularly the parts of that community that may be marginalised, for example, in terms of ethnicity or gender. Despite the pandemic, well over 100 undergraduates, masters and PhD students in the School of Health Sciences have logged nearly 4,000 hours of volunteering for a range of very important projects, such as working for the Brightside Trust, which provides mentoring for young people, supporting refugees and asylum seekers, the World Food Programme, and Fair Share UK to reduce food waste. Volunteering for Shout, thus providing 24-7 mental health support, to name just a few. So do keep on making a difference to your communities and causes, and I hope that wherever your career journey takes you, you strive to be champions of vulnerable populations whose needs are overlooked and voices are not always heard. In these unparalleled times, we need exceptional people like you. So now you're ready to use your education. I know from meeting our alumni in the past that our graduates go on to do great things. I've been impressed by some stunning portfolio careers. And on reflection, I recognize that all of our graduates exhibit common characteristics. They're confident and not afraid to make brave decisions. They have tremendous energy and a propensity for hard work. But they're also altruistic and recognize their responsibilities to others, not least to us, as some enjoy giving time to help us nurture the next generation. We're confident that you will follow this distinguished line of University of Manchester alumni in making a significant difference in your chosen field. And I'm sure that you'll be celebrating more achievements in the years to come. We hope that you'll continue to share these with us and that we have inspired you with a thirst for lifelong learning and that some of you may even return to your university for more. To conclude, I can only concur with the last comment I saw on the student survey. Great people, great atmosphere. Please stay in touch with us, as well as the great friends you've made here and remain part of our great community. We know that you will not only take opportunities, but you'll also make opportunities, some of which we can't even imagine yet. So be brave, be bold, as you challenge and shape the world. So our warmest congratulations to you all. Thank you. President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I would like to present to you for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy, Optometry, Chimdi Emmanuel Emma Duru. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Research, Public Health, Louise Sarah Cooper. And for the degree of Master of Public Health, Charlotte Heppel. Farina Khan. Verity Marie Louise Robinson. <laughs> Michael Thomas Yukio Sujimoto.
and in advanced audiology studies, Yu Peng Wu. And in advanced leadership for professional practice nursing, Chloe Lawrence. <laughs> si Yi Wu. <laughs> and in advanced leadership for professional practice social work, Samantha Lu Louise Lewis. And in Advanced Nursing Practice and Leadership, Louise Garlick. <laughs> Angela Leather. <laughs> and in Audiology, Natalie Jane Leach. Kareen Marie Wales. <laughs> and in Deaf Education, Catherine Stafford. <laughs> and in Dental Public Health, Claire Netsi Mangoyana. And in Health Data Science, Jeroni Jenny Kloss. <laughs> Mohammed Arman Khan. <laughs> and in Occupational Medicine, Muna Ahmed Al Hamadi. Blessing Garamum Hango. <laughs> and in social work, Olutola Ani Mashu. <laughs> Besim Fon. Anisha Ashraf. Jasmine Lee Richardson. <laughs> and in Specialist Practice Cancer, Alexandra Leanne Lagstaff. <laughs> Panagiotta Spiridula Stavropoulou. And in Deaf Education, Emma Jane Danton. <laughs> Carly Duffield. <laughs> Nadina Ellis. <laughs> Rosie Perfect Fenwick Rash. Claire Louise Griffin. <laughs> Carly Humphreys. <laughs> Chani McCheeta. <laughs> Catherine Overton. Jennifer Price. <laughs> Lee.
Lindsay Marie Robinson. <laughs> Catherine Deborah Sharp. <laughs> Luke David Wilkes. <laughs> and in social work, Issa Lingeni Mispa Lokando. <laughs> And in advanced practice interventions for mental health, primary mental health care, Taslima Begum. <laughs> Shannon Rose Howarth. <laughs> Gemma Leach. Landrine Matembera. <laughs> Jennifer Lynn Podmore. <laughs> Nikita Roberts. <laughs> and for the degree of Master of Science Optometry with Honours, Femina Solomon. <laughs> and in speech and language therapy with honours, Emma Louise Beckett. <laughs> Samantha Owen. And for the degree of Bachelor of Nursing, Adult Nursing with Honours, Isadora Alice James. <laughs> Rifaya Tun Nessa. <laughs> and in Audiology with Honours, Uma Asif Ahmed. Habiba Akhtar. <laughs> Nayela Arshad. <laughs> Anisa Aslam. <laughs> Zainab Ijaz. Alima Islam. <laughs> Khadija Ismail. <laughs> Malaika Kaduji. <laughs> Anisa Murad. Mohammed Arif Patel. <laughs> Afsa Patel. <laughs> Ardil Patel. <laughs> Fiza Rayman. Gulafro Saeed. <laughs> Farzine Sajid. <laughs> Kainat Tariq. <laughs> Sidra Yusuf. And in mental health nursing with honours, Anjona Priyanka Badaya. <laughs> Brenda Soko.
and in midwifery with honours, Alana Jane Daly. <laughs> Valerie Ofisuhin. <laughs> and in optometry with honours, Tasnim Ahmed. Farmid Sameer Ahmed. <laughs> Marwa Ahmed. <laughs> Musamath Akhtar. <laughs> Iram Ansari. Rebecca Arobaja. <laughs> Safa Askar. <laughs> Tarima Hurani Begum. <laughs> Tino Tender Shapasanya. Juwaria Kaiser Shisti. <laughs> Eloise Clark. <laughs> Georgia Cook. <laughs> Daniel Delal. Samira Da. <laughs> Fatima Desai. <laughs> Amira Mohammed Asan. <laughs> Mohammed Hichim Gufa. Asima Hafeseji. <laughs> Amy Kate Haggett. <laughs> Mataz Hamid. <laughs> Reese Simon Hennigan. Mohammed Imtiaz Hock. <laughs> Shifa Hussein. <laughs> Aisha Iqbal. <laughs> Maria Iqbal. <laughs> Fazana Islam. Also graduating with Outstanding Academic Achievement Award, Nathan Jones. <laughs> Sarina Jusup. <laughs> Sarah Khan. <laughs> Samoon Janet Khan. Anissa Khanum. <laughs> Samaya Jamil Latif. <laughs> Nashish Mahmood. <laughs> Kari Miles. <laughs> Bisma Musawa.
Sasha Nehal. Marion Chinelu Obi. Humaira Padawala. Sissy Pan. Asif Patel. Nazreen Patel. Raisa Patel. Mohammed Imdadula Patel. <laughs> Natalia Helena Pushinska. <laughs> Nimra Kadir. <laughs> Isha Sakir. Mohammed Farhan Sada. <laughs> Ismail Shahzada. <laughs> Rukaya Aska Sheikh. <laughs> Mohammed Zain Suleiman. Kieran Tam. <laughs> Katie Rose Thompson. <laughs> Fat Fatima Ogara Wright Radar. <laughs> Nada Valian. Fatima Valley Patel. <laughs> Afsha Wahid. <laughs> Ariel Kwao Wen Young. <laughs> and in speech and language therapy with honours. Aisha Bapu. <laughs> Sophie Bishop. <laughs> Amara Chanara. <laughs> Dominique Eagley. Julia Freeman. <laughs> Sophie Gardner. <laughs> Juliet Haslam. <laughs> Jessica Louise Hayes. Amy Hinchcliffe. <laughs> Emily Dewey. <laughs> Neve Marie Kemp. <laughs> also graduating with an Outstanding Academic Achievement Award, Hira Kawaja. Kitty Lawler. Amy Lewis. Paige Miller. Chen Donk Moy.
Chloe Morris. <laughs> Amelia Rose Louisa Parsonage. <laughs> Catherine Rice. <laughs> Vanessa Roberts. Deborah Robinson. <laughs> Laura Simcock. <laughs> Katie Jane Sproston. <laughs> Jade Sussman. Lauren Lily Timmins Clark, <laughs> and for the award of Bachelor of Nursing, Adult Nursing, Igor Plashkovich. <laughs> and for the award of Bachelor of Science with Honours in Optometry, Kanwal Natvi. Sama Ali. <laughs> Saif Hussein. <laughs> Asima Valley. <laughs> Nadia Hussein. Talha Patel. <laughs> Muhammad Abu Bakar. <laughs> Antonio Ng. On behalf of everybody in the university, our warmest congratulations on your amazing achievements. We wish you every future success in your career and happiness in your lives. Please all stand. It's nearly time to celebrate now. I declare this ceremony closed. <laughs>